The Red Sox indeed made a move this offseason. No, it's not super flashy, but it did get Red Sox fans talking. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I'm your host, Nessens Lauren Willand, and beside me, as always, is my co-host, Jake Ignazewski. And if you're watching on YouTube, no, that is not a backdrop. Jake is in San Diego. It looks so beautiful. The weather's always perfect in San Diego. Jake will be at the winter meetings. He's doing it. There's a networking event. And as always, he continues to grind. So he's out there enjoying the weather, enjoying the three hour time difference, time being behind. So we're, well, not we, Jake is coming to you from San Diego. I am coming to you from Massachusetts, where it is a bit chillier than San Diego. But the Red Sox signed someone this offseason and it's a relief pitcher. So yay, we got some help in the bullpen. It's Chris Martin. They signed him, reportedly signed him to a two-year deal worth $17.5 million. His numbers aren't sexy. They're not, they don't jump out at the page at you. This guy has never reached 60 innings, but he does limit walks a lot. He only had five walks in 2022, and that was across 56 innings. And he has the best strikeout to walk ratio since 2018 with a minimum of 200 innings pitched. It's Chris Martin with nine and a half, Justin Verlander with 7.2, and then Jacob deGrom, who just signed a nice deal with Texas Rangers. Uh, at 6.9. So there is definitely potential. And I know that I've said before that Red Sox fans don't want potential. They want somebody who has the experience, who's kind of a proven starter, reliever, player, whatever. And maybe Chris Martin can be this. I see him as a high leverage reliever. I don't hate this move by any means, but I'm certainly not jumping up and down. But credit where credit due. Credit, give credit where credit is due. High and Bloom got help in the bullpen. There's still a ton of work to be done, but I'm going to give this an okay start. That's the main thing that, you know, I, I, I thought of when I first saw the new Bloom made a move to upgrade the bullpen. That's, that's, that's the main thing that I think Red Sox fans can get. The numbers aren't super sexy. This guy is also going into his age 37 season. But at the same time, sort of his career ended up, you know, playing, playing independent ball. Also used to play for the Red Sox, spent three years in the Sox farm system. But, you know, then he had a period where, you know, working out low over Japan as well. And, you know, he, he's really been, been sort of, I would say, a late bloomer of, of really, as you mentioned, 2.8% walk rate. Can't really, really complain about that whatsoever. And the main thing when you really look at it as well is I don't think the Red Sox overpaid. It was one of the best relievers, at least in high level situations last year. You know, when you look at with, you know, what Montero got, with, what Edwin Diaz got, 20 million, uh, eight, eight point, you know, five for two years. That's not bad at all. No, it is a, it is a nice friendly deal. I don't think this is also a deal that will stop them from re-signing Xander Bogarts if that's the direction they're going to go. But he spent, uh, Chris Martin spent time with the Dodgers and the Cubs last season. He went 4-1 with a 305 ERA, 982 whip with 74 strikeouts. Um, and then with the Dodgers, he went 3-1. and one. So the 4-1 and one was overall. With the Dodgers, 3-1, one, 146 ERA and throughout 26 games with LA. So that was, I mean, that's promising to end the season like that on a high note. And his career is a 916 record, 384 ERA. So it's, that record is eh, but the ERA you look at it, it obviously it, it could be better, but... I, I think there were worse options out there. And the fact that they got this done at a I, what I believe is to be a reasonably priced reliever, I'll take it. You put him in there, I trust him a lot more than Ryan Brazier. And, and you, you know, the, the big question, you know, we've mentioned with a lot of these bullpen arms is, what are you going to put him in? You know, you mentioned high leverage reliever, you know, then you also got John Schreiber, Tanner Houck as well. So um, there's, how are you? really going to utilize Chris Martin and then the other question as well is is, is Alex Cole he did last season to where you know he, he would really assess the situation and then ultimately put or the other and so 
you know, I'm, I'm curious to see if the Red Sox really try and uh, uh, use him so successful with the Dodgers. As you mentioned, that ERA with, with LA really sticks out to me. You know, being able to really maximize him to the fullest and really ensure that you put him as just possible, I think is super important. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you don't get an ERA sub two across 26 innings if you're not in control and in command of your pitches, which we saw a lot of the bullpen really struggle with last year. And like I said, I trust them more than Ryan Brazier right now. But, you know, you have other people in there who don't really know what their roles are. They just still don't have a closer, a bona fide closer. I, that's, I don't think that's Chris Barton's role at all. That's not where he's going to go. But if they can count on someone for these higher leverage situations, that's a good start. No, it's like I said, it's not the move that Red Sox fans wanted. We all know the move that the Red Sox fans want. But, you know, you need to start plugging and filling your holes where you're, you're missing your pieces. You need to start filling the void. You need to start building a, a team for 2023 and beyond because fans hold on to every last thing that High and Bloom is going to say from the end of the season to whenever his time is up in Boston. They're going to hang on to every single word. Mm -hmm. And he's been, he's, it's been out there that he's promised players, allegedly, that he that this team will be better. So no, Chris Martin is not going to get you a World Series. He's not going to automatically put you back into postseason contention. But he's going. He he could be. He's, nothing is guaranteed. He could be a pivotal piece to at least help you get there. But it's still up to the Red Sox to do a hell of a lot more with this off season and these winter meetings. You know they officially start Sunday, but it's a really I'd say very, very, very important next few days here for the Red Sox and especially for High and Bloom. Yeah, he, he's going to have to make a lot of different moves or, or at least, you know, start these conversations. You know, that's one thing that is with, with these winter meetings. Lots of conversations happening, lots of in exact area. And I think one thing that you could really see as well is the trade market really start to pick up. You know, uh, really sort of slow obviously compared to last year when teams really had as fast as possible before the, before the MLB lockout happened. But, uh, you know, agents on the same place together. I think that, you, you know, you're going to see a lot of traction happen. But from what we've heard, you know, I think Aaron Judd be the main player that once his is announced, then the rest of it is going to be a domino effect. Yeah, I was going to say that I think he'll be the first big player, but that would be doing a disservice to Jacob deGrom, who just signed a five-year deal with the Texas Rangers. Good for him. Get that bag, and hopefully he can help that Rangers rotation and help that Rangers team. But he definitely was one of the bigger players off the market first. I was kind of hoping maybe that would start a little bit of a domino effect because it's been a very slow offseason just completely across the league, not just with the Red Sox. But it, it didn't. But hopefully we see this in the winter meetings. We are going to talk a little bit more about the winter meetings in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast, kind of what – our listeners want to want to happen during these winter meetings. Obviously, we have to talk about Xander Bogarts. This wouldn't be a Locked On Red Sox episode if we did not talk about Xander <laughs> Bogarts. We will get to all of that and more as soon as I tell you about Bet Online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional sport and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer. The World Cup is very much underway esports nhl we've got it all over at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts which you probably do if you're listening to locked on red Sox, you can find those at bet online as well they're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting fix head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more that's bet online where the game starts and as always thank you for making locked on red Sox your first listen of every single day once this episode wraps up, head on over and check out Locked On Sports today for listen number two from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. You get to go beyond the scoreboard, behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. So as we mentioned, Jake is at San, in San Diego. The winter meetings are technically under, well, at least East Coast time should be underway, but maybe not on West Coast time. But there is a lot to get done with the Red Sox. You mentioned Aaron Judge. He's got a really, really big decision to make. And I don't know if the Yankees can afford to lose him. And maybe hopefully they have a plan B if they do end up losing him to the Giants or whoever else decides to dish out a ton of money for Judge. But 
I obviously the, the move here is Xander Bogarts. I don't know if he will sign during these winter meetings, but there was a report from Bob Nightingale and say what you want about Nightingale. Like, yes, he's, he's a jinx. And sometimes he gets a, some, a lot of stuff wrong, but we all know that there was going to be a ton of interest in Bogarts. He reported on Sunday that there are nine teams now interested in him. That's no surprise at all. But I think, you know, I think about the, the Zach Eflin deal where the Red Sox pretty much had him ready to sign the deal. And he called up the Rays and was like, Hey, will you match this offer? And they were like, yep. So going back to my episode on Friday that Sam Kennedy didn't really want to say if they'd be, have the opportunity to match outside offers. Like clearly you can, if you are given the opportunity. Now, if you're not given the opportunity, that's a whole nother issue, but they are going to have a lot of competition because a lot of teams need a shortstop and the Red Sox are certainly one of them. But I think that I, I said this Friday that I'm not feeling, and this is the first time I've actually not felt optimistic about Xander Bogarts coming back. I don't think he makes a decision at these winter meetings, but I think we'll get a little bit more clarity. I, I think with the report from Nightingale, it, he, he, he mentioned that that is getting the amount of interest is Xander Bogarts. And, and as a Red Sox fan, uh, and, you know, it's especially, you, you know, with the Red Sox putting all their stock question is, you know, if he does sign elsewhere, uh, they're essentially sort of Turner or a Dansby Swanson. And, you know, I, I'm very curious to see you know, there's not a lot of viable options for plan B's, you know, but that is not the number one priority of the Boston Red Sox is to re-sign Xander Bogart's. I am curious to see sort of to see if maybe that's what Xander's waiting for. But uh, the one big thing that, you know, I saw fans really get upset about with the with the specifically the Eflin situation lack of um, confidence going into the future or the, or the lack of um, committed down I mean, obviously the down season last year the Red Sox aren't looked at at least the Eflin example and maybe we can see more examples in in throughout this offseason as as a desirable top three is the Dodgers Yankees and Red Sox the bit major league baseball and you know it, it's unfortunate to see you know it getting to this point but you know, I think moves like they did with Martin and, and continue to really solidify that 2023 roster. So then Sanford and signed that contract. He he does feel confident going back to a Red Sox team where he could win. Yeah, and with, with the Eflin thing, like, I don't know. I think people got way too mad over it because he wanted to play in his home state. So there's right. there, if you want to play where you're from or where you live and where you're comfortable, there's, no, there, there's nothing you can do. It stinks, yeah, so 100%. Stinks mm-hmm. that the Red Sox you know, did not have that advantage, but it wasn't because I don't think it was because that it's Boston isn't looked at as a, a desirable location. I think that's uh, I just don't think that's the case at all. I think that the, Boston still is a desirable destination. Obviously, after 2022, it's like, oh, who'd want to play here? But there's always that expectation to win. There's always that playing in the with, with a historic franchise. And um, we could go down the list of why the Red Sox still are a desirable location. Well, it's also <laughs> tough with all, with all the question marks too, because like the one thing that I think about is players like that, they have solidified guys there. And, and so, you know, I, I think, you know, with a lot of these free agents there, um, what sort of possibility that they have to contend um, in 2023. You know, I, I think, you know, a lot of people exaggerated with the F. Um, I, I think that, you know, what, Time boom in the front office really need to do is make that where people are, are are wanting to come and you know i think that there is still people out there yeah and um with, with bogarts specifically i don't think he's waiting on an extension for devers but maybe there's some verbal agreement there like listen like the, if you want me back this is he's got to be part of this future as well and he's mm-hmm. he's right i mean he, he's absolutely right there's just no denying both of their talent and especially Devers, and I know that they probably want to wait a little bit longer, but then I think about the Bruins where it's like, why haven't they signed David Poshnok to an extension? He's, his price is only <laughs> going to go up. And I think Devers, through, even though it wasn't the best season for him, it was still very productive, and I think it showed that he's obviously a, a very important part to this team and somebody who can provide a spark. And the players love him, the fans love him, obviously Alex Cora loves him. But Jake asked on Twitter what he, you guys were hopeful for to happen at these winter meetings. Um, and outside of Bogart's endeavors, 
what was the number one move? And he got some good responses. So Zach said he wants Bieber or another ace, find a tri- find a trade partner and get it done. Seems pretty simple enough. I mean, I, they absolutely need another starting pitcher. And they definitely, especially if you don't bring Avaldi back, I, I'm still like, Avaldi's not an, an ace ace, but you do need somebody there to fill that hole. There's just a lot of uncertainty around Chris Sale. If you do bring Avaldi back, we talked about this, like his injury history and everything like that. 100% that this Red Sox team needs, it needs a lot, of, a lot of pitching help, but a starter is something that they really need to focus on getting done. Listen, they have a nice farm system where they can package some deals. I think there are some untouchables there, but I do think that they have some good depth pieces that are attractive in a trade. Big Sox guy, he said a frontline starting pitcher or a closer. I mean, same thing with with Zach with the, with the starting pitcher, but a closer I think would be interesting because I do think they have candidates. But again, it just goes back to my whole thing where if – we don't want potential. We want that they want they want that certified bona fide closer. They want that reliability. Can Matt Barnes do that? Carry over what he did at the end of 2022 into 2023. I'm willing to put money on people being confident, being not as confident in Matt Barnes, more toward being confident that he can handle that role. If there's a closer out there that could come cheap, and obviously the no one's going to come cheap in this off season, but if you can get a closer, it might be worth looking into. At least just explore. <laughs> they're, of course, they're going to explore that option. They're interest kings. But it would be nice to kind of get a closer because I feel like there just hasn't been one on this team in what seems like a million years. Yeah, look, looking back at this season, it is sort of laughable. To my rants, I remember I had two or three, like, really high and amped. It, it was funny to, you know, look back at that and see how frustrating. You know, it's the truth. The, the closer by committee did not work and you know i think sort of what i mentioned with, with you know you you saw a nick mark and martin get you know 11.5 million dollars obviously you know we we see the brewers are sort of one of those teams obviously that they traded by last trade deadline but you know maybe some other teams the oakland days the Cincinnati reds are are looking to you know continue to build up their prospect capital and look, and look to offload some of those to free agents. Christopher Ross said uh, fire high and bloom and Brandon Kelly did not agree with him. I, I can't say what Brandon Kelly said. He, he did a, 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 a meme of Ross from friends and um, like I, said, I, I cannot say what it says, but he does not agree with, with Chris Ross and firing high oh, that, and bloom. That was funny. <laughs> it was funny. I obviously that that's not going to happen. And I've mentioned that Red Sox fans, Patience is very, very thin. I'm willing to bet that Christopher's mm-hmm. patience is just completely gone with High and Bloom. But I think that, and we've talked about this, that this is a very, very important off-season, winter meetings, season as a whole for High and Bloom. Uh, Brandon Kelly did did say hit what he wanted. He said Bassett or Rodone. A lot of people, well, two people said Rodon. Um, I, I like that idea of him, Chris Bassett as well. I think that you know what you're going to get from them, and I, that's somebody that the Red Sox should target. I'd welcome either of them. We've talked a lot about the starting pitching, so I think they just they'd be good in this rotation. Daryl said uh, Carlos Correa, and then E Street replied to him saying that wouldn't hurt. So <laughs> we have two people <laughs> on in Correa, and obviously Correa would be the plan B should the Red Sox not sign yep. Xander Bogarts, but. Honestly, if that's the thing, you know, if that's the case where Bogarts does not resign here, you go get Correa. I think Red Sox fans, it will still suck. Uh, they want Bogarts, but I think mm-hmm. getting Correa would be like, oh, okay, so they're taking this seriously. They're they're replacing or trying to replace an All Star shortstop with another All Star shortstop and someone you know is going to produce. There's options out there. There's plenty of options out there. We know this. Now it's just going to be a matter of what the Red Sox will do. And our final answer on that, on your tweet, is our friend Jared. He said, just just Xander endeavors. <laughs> very very simple guy. He That's all he wants. That's We should all be like Jared. Just very simple. I mean, all the answers were very straightforward and simple. But hopefully this this can get done. Obviously, this is the this is the move. This is now the winter meetings. This is kind of when the offseason starts to pick up. So it's just a matter of unfortunately waiting. And a lot of us, you know, we're, and we see the pass in tweets. We see the Morosi tweets and we're like, oh my God, what now? We see the breaking news. We're like, who is it? And it's nothing to do with the Red Sox. And it's like, okay. 
take a deep breath. So well, we're going to get through this together. We have one more segment here on the Locked On Red Sox podcast. We are going to do our mental health minute as soon as I tell you about Simply Safe because at Locked On Red Sox, we believe home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. The season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, which is Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Red Sox listeners. 40% off a new security system. So do not put this off. I have it in my house. I absolutely love it. Yes, I have a Dutch Shepherd as a dog for protection as well. No one's getting in the house. No one's getting past Roxy. But just to have that added layer of protection make just makes me feel that much safer. I know that my home's protected. My family is all good. It, it, and this the Simply Safe system could help to avert break-ins. There is the, the technology is just incredibly effective. And it's just something that, again, you take that extra step to make yourself feel a little bit safer. So with the top rated Simply Safe app, you can also stay in complete control of your system. You can arm and disarm the system. You can unlock the door for a guest. We can do everything from our phone. Let's just add that to the list. So do everything from your phone. You can even access your cameras. I do that because I want to check in on my dog and she's just vibing on the couch half the time. So don't miss your chance to be saving big money on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There is no safe like Simply Safe. So we haven't done our mental health minute as consistently as we've done in the past, but now with the holidays approaching and we've talked about, you know, just being kinder and just kind of going the extra mile to be kind, especially now. You know, it's Christmas is coming. You're going to have a lot of stressed holiday shoppers. If you're last minute like me, I am so sorry if I just look stressed. I'm just trying to get in and out of the stores and stores are going to be more crowded. Just be a little more patient with people these this holiday season. We've said it before. You never know what someone's going through. But even today I was in Marshalls and I couldn't tell you how crowded it was. And I felt claustrophobic. I was starting to feel very anxious. And I'm just like, there's people everywhere there's children there's elderly people and i'm just trying to get what i need and get out but just slow down a little bit everyone's there to probably for the same reason and we're all going to get out if we just have a little more patience this holiday season couldn't agree more and you know that's one thing that you know i've really tried to practice is having grace for people you don't know you know what people are going through and the one thing that you know i noticed um to store you know any other story of Something takes a little bit longer than, you know, it usually does. People like to just, just like to, you know, be a little bit rude to people. And, you know, in my mind, that, that doesn't help out the situation whatsoever. It makes you in a bad mood. It puts them in a bad mood as well. And, you know, that's one, one thing that, you know, I really try to patient and positive as, as I can and, you know, as calm as I can. You know, I, I, had, I had a situation without business cards. I was waiting for the supervisor for a half an hour. And uh, she, she said to me, you know, I got, got to be honest, I, said, yeah, I was getting a tiny bit frustrated once it got to, you know, it just wait, you know, it's all going to happen, you know, when it's supposed to, you know, you can't rush these people. So um, you know, that, you know, just, just be appreciative, say thank you. Um, and, you know, I, I think even, you know, the smaller for somebody, you don't know, you know, how, how much that could make their day potentially. Yeah, a smile can go a long, long way. So thank you once again for tuning into the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox right here on YouTube. Maybe we'll get some more beautiful San Diego content from Jake this week. <laughs> Apple, Spotify, the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcast is where you can find us. Also find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy, and then me, La 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 Lauren, Three Laws Lauren with four R's. And there are several other teams across this Locked On network that have a lot of off-season content coming for you. Locked On Astros, Locked On Yankees. Everyone does such a great job here bringing you content, especially in the off-season, Monday through Friday. Everyone's grinding to give our listeners what we believe is the best content possible. And now that you've made Locked On Red Sox your first listen, be sure to check out Locked On Sports today for listen number two. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, you go beyond the scoreboard, behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports today, available on, on Odyssey app right here on YouTube. Basically, like Locked On Red Sox, wherever you get your podcast is where you can find Locked On Sports today. 
We'll be back all this week with any hopefully good breaking news. We'll be there. We'll be there to break everything down. Hopefully the Red Sox make some moves that make fans happy. So we don't have to come on here and share your anger, but we're going to end this show how we always do. And that's let's go Red Sox.